This will be a video on picking horizons. Um, in this case, we're going to try to pick the Dakota horizon, and I'm going to show you how to use uh, four types of picking tools. First of all, this is a seismic interpretation task, so we're going to want to go down to the, process, the processes pane and select seismic interpretation. That will then give us the list of tools that we need. This is the same list you used for picking faults. I'm also going to use the 3D window and the interpretation window to do the picking. So in this case, I'm working with the cross line 120, and I'm going to go to the uh, interpretation window. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to first demonstrate the uh, uh, the so-called manual picking. I guess I should jump over. We're going to select uh, the horizons tool to say that we're going to pick horizons. There are four types of picking tools. First is manual interpretation, seen on the right. Second is guided auto tracking. Third is seated 2D auto tracking. And the fourth is seated 3D auto tracking. I'm going to first demonstrate a manual interpretation tool. This is not going to help us by doing any kind of automatic tracking of horizons. It just allows us to pick where we choose to pick. Um, okay, it's telling me there's no active seismic horizon, which means I need to go, I can put, I can click for a horizon uh, by going down here to create new horizon tool on the bottom. And this has now created Seismic Horizon 1, which is located right here. And that's where I will put the picks that I'm about to make. So I have the manual tool, and I can go along and manually select points on this horizon. It's picking in this case, trying to pick in the middle. If I, I each time I was moving across, I was picking uh, with a single click on the left button, and the last the last point I used a double click. So I can go and it will do exactly where I put and things and it will keep, it will maintain a straight line. In fact, it doesn't do anything smart in this case because I can take this pick and I can go up here and it will blindly follow that. So that's manual picking. Uh, we can erase things by using the bounding box or other tools like we did with, uh, with faults. So I'm simply going to select this. It turns yellow, indicating it's been selected, and I can delete. So that's a way to delete uh, mistakes or errors that we've made. I'm going to go on to uh, guided auto tracking. I have to click the horizon button, and then to uh, guided auto tracking. And this is now going to be an aid. It's going to help me. I'm also going to click what are called seeds here. And for example, I'll click that one. But in this case, it has now positioned that point exactly at the peak of that particular trace. I can come along and click again with my left mouse button. And in fact, I can go here. This, this straight line pick, the rubber band pick, wouldn't be very good. But when I click here and I click, then I'm going to double click to terminate this. You'll note that it has now found the peak and followed it exactly. So I didn't have to put that curve in. I can start a new set of picks by clicking left mouse button, and I can go all the way over here, double click, and it will follow. So this is a very easy tool. I can use the right arrow on the computer to move things over, and I can now pick again. And it now has filled in all of that section. So it's very, it's very handy. If I were to come here, I could fill right to this point. Okay, I get a good pick. I have control. It's not running away from me. Okay, I'm going to zoom out of this, and I'm going to delete that particular pick. This is probably a very common picking mode that you will use. The auto tracking has the capacity to, um, to do things very quickly but you uh, lose some of the control over what your picking is going to be doing. Okay, I'm now going to move on. I'm going to pick, again, the, the horizon button. And now I'm going to go to seated 2D auto tracking. Before I do that, I'm going to put a couple of sections in 
so that you'll see something that it does. So this is still back with the guided. I'm going to put two little segments in here as seeds. Now, when I go to the 2D auto tracking, now when I click one time with the left mouse button, it is not only it is going to follow automatically along this two-dimensional section. So I'm going to click here once and you notice that it ran to this point, it will stop when it gets to a pick that's already been made or a seed, and, but then we can go over in this direction. It has picked automatically to here. Now, I probably want this to go on. This means it's detected some lateral uh, heterogeneity and it stopped picking, uh, but I can now go ahead and put in another seed and it'll continue it further. So it's done a very nice job of identifying the end of this fault. I could come up here and put another seed in, and you can see it will then pick up and run some distance in this case. Okay, so this is really handy. Now I can come over, and here I have now a seed, and here I have a seed. If I click between, it will connect them, but it will stop. And then I can come over here and pick, and now I've run, I've run that reflector. Again, at this, uh, again at, okay, there it is, um, in the center. Um, I can continue this if I think this is still the same reflector. I can continue. It's detecting differences uh, in the peaks here, so it will really not do not go very far. So I might have to go in here and do guided auto tracking on this to get it to be complete. Okay, now the, the sort of the all-powerful but somewhat dangerous tool is the 3D auto tracking. So I'm going to come up here and go to the seated 3D auto tracking tool. Now what this is going to do is it's not only going to run and make automatic picks within the section we're looking at, but it is actually going to try to pick in the whole 3D volume. So I'm going to move over one section from this, 10, 10 traces, over so that I have a blank slate, and then we'll run the uh, auto tracking on that. So I'm going to move this over. I'm now into uh, 10, 10 traces over. And now I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to click once with my left button, and it is then going to fill in the entire, or a good portion, or a lot of the uh, of the data set. So I'm going to click here. Notice here that now, instead of stopping at this point, it actually made the connection across the fault. It did that by taking a route that was outside of this particular section. So now, if I were to move uh, by stepping over, you'll note that well, it hasn't uh, hasn't picked that one. Um, Okay, so let's look in the 3D window. Let's turn on this horizon. And you note that it picked one side, just like in the 2D, because I had put a, pro, a line through here and picked it with the uh, 2D auto tracking, it only picked on this side. It uses those as boundaries. So we can go back in, we can go um, we can pick another point here, and my guess is that will have now filled out the whole thing. I put a one seed in on the other side. You notice that we have a large surface area now, um, and we can control. If you find that you have this surface turns up just in a solid color, the a place that you can look for that is this Z style menu. Z values is what you want to check, and you want to check on colors. Sometimes it will come up, this will not be checked, this will all be empty, and but you can override the, the global property template, fancy words for the color scale, and you will then be able to uh, apply this, and you will get colors that correspond, in this case, to the two-way travel time to the surface. So that's a way, those are a set of tools that you can use to do picks on uh, seismic horizons.